Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today is the start of my June vlog style book haul. If you're new to these, the way that I do them is I do a clip throughout the month every time new books arrive, which is fun and y'all seem to enjoy them. I have three packages to open up, but first I've also every month this year been using these videos as an opportunity to take a look at my owned TBR, which I am trying to read down. Now, if you saw my May video, you know that May did not go as planned. <laughs> so let's hope June uh, is much better. I think I'm already on the path to it being a better month. We'll see. But let's talk about my starting numbers as of the beginning of June. And then at the end of the video, I will revisit this and we'll see what progress I made. At the beginning of June, I had 183 books on my owned audio TBR, which is up by six from the beginning of the year. Yeah, <laughs> I, need to, I need to read those down. In terms of ebooks, I ended up at 67, which is exactly the same. I'm taking that as a win. I don't read a lot of purchased ebooks. And then in terms of physical books, I ended at 461, which is negative 27 for the year, but it was up 13 from what it was at the end of April. So again, hoping that June will move these numbers in the direction that I want them to go. And with that said, let's open these packages. I've got some very exciting things. First up is a pre-order from Barnes & Noble. And if this is what I think it is, I have already read it and it was wonderful. <laughs> I had an advanced copy on NetGalley. Yay! Ooh, I didn't know it was gonna be green over here. I like that, that's pretty. Okay, so this is An Island Princess Starts a Scandal by Adriana Herrera. It is a sapphic historical romance set in 1889 France between a very pretty, vivacious, feminine woman who is an artist. And before she consigns herself to a marriage that she doesn't want, she wants to have a summer of fun and debauchery with the ladies. Enter Cora, who is a duchess and a buttoned up businesswoman who has vowed to never again let a love interest mess with her business interests or her personal interests. But what's she gonna do? Manuela is about to upend all of that. So this is really great. It's really fun. I had a couple of quibbles with it, which I'll talk about in my end of month wrap up. I was hoping it would be another new favorite because I loved A Caribbean Heiress in Paris. It was one of my favorite books of the year last year. And this is a sequel or companion novel to that. This one is like a four and a half star read, but still really, really good. So do you recommend? Um, yay. So happy to add this to my shelves. This is from a publisher, I think. I'm not 100% sure what it is. So let's find out. I think these packages are usually from Tachyon. So let's see if I'm right. Yes, I think I am right. Oh, yay. Okay, cool. So I did know they were going to send me this. It is A Stranger in the Citadel by Tobias S. Buckle. This comes out October 17th and it sounded really interesting. Tachyon Press is a small press that does mostly sci-fi fantasy books and they have some really good ones. This one says it's a complex novel of humanity's passion for the written word. At the revolutionary crossroads of magic, betrayal, and long forgotten truths, a naive, compassionate royal and a determined hunted librarian discover a dangerous world of mortal and ancient menaces. I love it. I like a book about books. This sounds interesting. You shall not suffer a librarian to live. I mean, it looks great. So thank you to them. And then lastly, I finally have a pre-order from Subterranean Press. I ordered this last fall and it had been delayed, but it is now in my hands. I'm very excited for this. It is. Subterranean Press does fancy limited edition books, but you can usually get the ebook and sometimes the audiobook, even if the physical copies are sold out. So this is a novella from an author I love, and the premise sounded interesting, and so I had to have it. It's, of course, nicely sealed up in bubble wrap. We want it in good condition. They're not cheap. Get this invoice out. Okay, here's the book. Ah, yay! This is Rose House by Arkady Martin. Listen, I 
freaking loved the Tex Kalan series from Arkady Martin, A Memory Called Empire, um, and its sequel. And so when I found out she was coming out with a new novella, I was like, yes, please give it to me. It sounds great. Bassett Denau's houses were haunted to begin with. A house embedded with an artificial intelligence is a common thing. A house that is an artificial intelligence infused in every load-bearing beam and fine marble tile with a thinking creature that is not human? That is something else altogether. But now, denau has been dead a year and Rose House is locked up tight as commanded by the architect's will. All his possessions and files and sketches are confined in its archives and their only keeper is Rose House itself. Rose House and one other. So there's only one other person who can access it, but supposedly there's somebody inside the house that is dead and the lady doctor who can enter it has to go investigate. Very excited for this. So yeah, these are really nice, like beautiful cloth bound additions and it is signed, limited to a thousand copies. Got number 82. Um, yeah, that's very exciting. So Yay, I'm so glad it finally made it. Hello, it's the same day, but I was still filming and a uh, package arrived, so I thought let's go ahead and open this up since I'm all set up for this. This is from Macmillan. I'm not sure what it is. Probably something from Core. Okay, let's see. Oh, yay! Okay, I did know I was getting this. So this is an advanced copy of the new edition of City of Bones by Martha Wells. Tor.com has picked up some of her older titles that were from like a small press or indie published maybe previously and are republishing them. So this is one of those. Before Martha Wells captured the hearts of millions with her Murderbot series, there were Kai, Sagai, and Ellen, and a city risen out of death and decay. So it's an updated and revised 2023 edition from whatever was previous. This goes on sale in September, so I'm excited to read it. Thank you to Tor. Hello, I've got some packages to open. They've been kind of gathering for a few days. And my husband and I are celebrating our 12 year anniversary, which is wild. We've been married for 12 years. The way time goes, and he got me a really nice edition of the book, so I'm going to share that with you as well. Why don't we start with that? And then I've got a pre-order, I've got some publisher mail, and I've got a couple of packages from Pango Books, books that I bought using store credit. For our anniversary, my spouse surprised me with my very first Folio Society edition of a book, which is very exciting. This is beautiful. It is Half of the Yellow Sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. I have not read this. I don't have a copy of it. Oh my god, if I can get it out, hold on. This is so pretty. So it comes with this nice slip cover, and then this is the book. It's like this really nice cloth bound edition, and it's got some illustrations in it. This was really nice and thoughtful, so thank you so much to my husband for that. It's really beautiful. Folio Society makes such pretty editions of books. And I've never had one before, so that's very exciting. I've read some of her work before and I do like it. I am aware that she has said some harmful transphobic things. I don't think my husband is, <laughs> is aware of that, so this was very nice and thoughtful and totally the sort of thing that I would get, so I appreciate it. Next is my pre-order from Barnes & Noble. I'm excited about this one. Oh, this cover's so pretty. Okay, this is the latest Alexis Hall book, Mortal Follies. It's a sapphic historical romance. <laughs> that sounds so good. A fantasy romance, even better. A young noblewoman must pair up with an alleged witch to ward off a curse in this irresistible sapphic romance. Listen, I'm so excited. This looks amazing. It's very nice and floppy. Yay, I'm glad it arrived. Just in time for Pride Month. Then I've got two packages from Pango Books. These are used copies of books that I bought on there. I am gonna tell you, based on the size of this package, I think I may have bought the wrong edition of this book. So I wanted to complete my collection of a series by N.K. Jemisin and I'm trying to find these particular covers, but I forgot that they made those covers in mass market paperbacks, and this feels like a mass market size, so... <sighs> all right, it's okay, it's all right, we'll just have multiple editions of this book eventually. It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of my own fault for forgetting 
that they did this, but this is The Broken Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. Um, you know, it's, it's a, a, a mass market paperback size, <laughs> which is not what I wanted. I wanted the trade paperback size. This is why I need to check the details. Oh well, it's all right. Then we have this one, which is another used book. And it's looking like this may end up winning a poll for our Patreon book club in September. I am such a planner, y'all. I do things way ahead. So yes, we are voting for the September book in June. <laughs> you know, because some people like to use their library and need time to get library holds in. So I try to do things ahead of time so people can plan. This is, yay, Wild Seed by Octavia Butler. I will be very happy if this wins because I have never had a bad time reading Octavia Butler and I've not started this series yet. So adding it to my collection. I love these new editions. They're really pretty. Then I've got a couple things from publishers. This is from Penguin Random House. I am not sure what it is. So let's find out. I don't think I know of anything they're sending me, but maybe I just, I'm forgetting. Oh, okay. I did know this was coming. I just didn't realize it was from Penguin Random House. This I did get an email about. The Body in the Back Garden by Mark Waddell. Waddell? Waddell? I'm not sure. So this goes on sale in August and it's a queer, cozy mystery, which sounded like a lot of fun. Alex from Pucks and Paperbacks is a publicist working on this book and he had asked me if I'd be interested and I was like, yeah, this sounds great. Queer Cozy series debut, perfect for fans of Ellen Byron and Ellery Adams, Luke Tremblay is about to discover that Crescent Cove has more than its fair share of secrets and some might be deadlier than others. So small town, set in Canada. This sounds like fun. Thank you so much to Crooked Lane Books. Then this package arrived from Macmillan and I saw the start of somebody unboxing this. I didn't wait. To, I, I stopped before I saw what came inside, but I think this is from Fierce Reads. They're doing a mailing for Pride Month. So let's see if I'm right. Let's see if I can use my tiny scissors to open this and try not to show you my address <laughs> in the process. Okay. These are not the most, the most effective scissors, but I'll do the job. There we go. Okay. Let's see what they're doing. They did a mailing last year for Pride Month that was pretty cool. So, ooh, oh yay. Okay, this is cool. Um, celebrate Pride with these fierce reads. On the back, they've got QR codes for a couple of digital arcs. And then it looks like there are four books in this box, which is very exciting. First up is one that I just actually listened to an audio review copy of, and it's pretty adorable. This is The Do's and Donuts of Love by Adiba Jagirdar. It's a YA sapphic romance with a love triangle and a baking competition show with a Bangladeshi heroine, and it was really fun. I liked it. If you like melodrama, reality TV elements, and you're looking for a queer sapphic romance, I think this is really cute. And I also think that it handles her issues facing fat phobia really well. She's very comfortable in her body and has worked to get there and I love that. It's it's great. This was a lot of fun. I liked it. Then we have one that was not so much for me but some people are really loving it and I think maybe if I had had different expectations going in it would have worked better. It was the writing style but uh, Venom and Vow by Anna Marie McLemore and Elliot McLemore. I really love the concept of this. It's a YA fantasy novel by Anna Marie and their spouse, which is kind of cool as a writing team. It follows two queer and genderqueer, one non-binary, one trans characters who are on opposite sides of kind of a war. It's a little bit complicated. Um, it's a really beautiful book. I mean, like, honestly, look at this map and like, oof. It's really pretty. I <laughs> unlike the illustrations, it's it's really beautiful. I did struggle with the pacing and the writing style of this, but I really love the concept and I think that there are people who are 
very much enjoying it. It wasn't quite what I was expecting given what I've read from Anna Marie Macklemore in the past, but uh, yeah, thank you to Fierce Reads. Go give it a try. Then we've got two that I have not read that look awesome. Becoming a Queen by Dan Clay. The number of times that I have looked at this and almost picked it up is quite a few, so I'm very excited that it is now in my hands. I love the purple. So, fresh on the heels of a high school breakup, Mark Davis has given up on love. He's too much for suburban Annandale, too weird and too feminine for the only other gay guy at school. Thankfully, his big brother Eric is always there to stop Mark from spiraling into self-loathing. But as things start looking up for Mark in the form of Ezra Ambrose, he sees signs that his wise older brother might have problems of his own. When the source of Mark's strength suddenly becomes the source of his greatest pain, the path back to happiness seems impossible. Desperate for a way out to briefly live a different life, Mark slips into a dress. His sequined escape becomes an unexpected outlet, a path to authentic connection and an opportunity to see others as fully as he wants to be seen. That sounds lovely. And yeah, I think this is another debut novel. Again, it's, it's, I've been eyeing it. And the final book in the box is this one. This is a gorgeous cover. Forever is Now by Mariama J. Lockington. This looks like a contemporary. I'm safe here. That's how Sadie feels on a perfect summer day wrapped in her girlfriend's arms. School is out, and even though she's been struggling to manage her chronic anxiety, Sadie is hopeful better times are ahead, or at least she thought she was safe. When her girlfriend reveals some unexpected news and the two witness an incident of police brutality, Sadie's whole world is upended in an instant. So it looks like this is a YA novel in verse about mental health, love, family, black joy, and finding your voice and power in an unforgiving world. That sounds really lovely. What an awesome mailing from Fierce Reads. Thank you so much. And if you were looking for a queer YA book to read this Pride Month, I would go check these out. Hey, I got a package in the mail and I don't know what it is. So let's find out together. It feels like a book. So probably publisher mail. Let's see. I don't know if there's anything specific I'm expecting, but could be I forgot. Oh, yay! Oh, this is so exciting. Oh my gosh. Yes. This is from Forever Romance. I'm so excited. I actually requested this on NetGalley. Yay. Okay. My Rogue to Ruin by Erica Ridley. This is the next book in the Wild Winchester series. Um, which I love. This com is coming out September 12th. I love these books. It's interesting that they're going for an illustrated cover for this one. That's a new look. The other ones have been real people not illustrated. I wonder if this is just what's selling better, but I love this series. Marjorie Winchester has always let her siblings take the lead when it comes to planning their investigations, but someone in London is trying to pass off counterfeits, and this time she's the only one with the skill needed to find the culprit. Soon, all the evidence leads her straight to Lord Adrian Webb. Adrian is a roguish scoundrel of the First Order, but he never meant to get caught up in a forgery scheme, especially one that snowballed out of control. Now a blackmailer is out to ruin him, and the most alluring woman he's ever met is trying to put him behind bars. Oh man, I feel like this is going to be really fun. These are like a rompy good time. And I want to say she might be the disabled, she might, I might say she might be a disabled character, unless I'm mixing up the sisters and the family. I think that's right. But very excited for this. Thank you so much to Forever Romance. Hey y'all, I have a package. Uh, feels like a book. Not sure what it is. And I have some books to share from an event I went to, which was super fun. I'll have a short slash TikTok about the event, but it was really cool. I got invited to a promotional event for a book that is a rom-com kind of retelling When Harry Met Sally. So what they did is this really cool event at a theater where they had the author chat for a little bit about her book, and then they screened When Harry Met Sally and had some like goodies for us. And it was so much fun. I hadn't seen When Harry Met Sally for a long time, and I've never seen it on the big screen before, and it was a blast. It holds up pretty well. So that book, they gave us a couple other books I'll share too, but that book is called You Again by Kate Goldbeck. It comes out September 12th. If you're interested. And it's an updated, modernized, kind of somewhat gender flipped take on the When Harry Met Sally story, which sounds fantastic. 
I'm very excited. I, I will admit, full disclosure, that when I got the email inviting me to the event, I was like, that author name sounds really familiar. And so I went and looked and I've been mutuals with Kate on Twitter for a lot of years. <laughs> so I met her for the first time when I went to the event, which was kind of fun. So um, yeah, anyway, I'm excited about it. It sounds fun. Seeing the movie was really cool. And the person they had her chatting with for the interview also has a book that just came out that sounds fantastic that I think a lot of you might be interested in. I am. It's called Just As You Are by Camille Kellogg. It is a queer contemporary romance that is Pride and Prejudice inspired. Tell me you don't need a Pride and Prejudice a queer Pride and Prejudice story in your life. I'm very excited about it. Also set in New York. And um, these books and the other one I'm going to show you are part of Dial Press's new line that they're, that they're doing called Dial Delights. They're trying to do modern, inclusive, fun feminist romances, which sign me up. Love it. So thank you so much to Dial Press for inviting me. It was a lot of fun. The final book that they included was an arc of this one, This Spells Love by Kate Robb, which goes on sale December 5th of this year. And it says, a young woman tries to heal her heartbreak by casting a spell to erase her ex from her past, but she wakes up in an alternate reality where she's lost more than she wished for in this witty whimsical friends to lovers debut. So if that sounds up your alley, Go check it out again. Thank you to them. It was a really cool event. Then I have this. I, I genuinely don't know what this is. So I'm guessing from a published. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I did know this was coming. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh. Thank you to Orbit. This is uh, The Sun and the Void by Gabriela Romero La Cruz. Goes on sale in July and Orbit is Orbit had asked me if I would be interested. In a lush world inspired by the history and folklore of South America, a sweeping epic fantasy of colonialism, ancient magic, and two young women's quest for belonging unfolds. So yeah, it comes out July 25th. It's one that I've been really excited to read. I will say, I know Angela from Literature Science Alliance recently read it and was a little disappointed. She did say it's still a good book. It just didn't live up to her expectations of it. So I'm trying to go in with some tempered expectations expectations, but it's a beautiful cover and the premise sounds great. So yay, thank you to Orbit. Another package arrived. This one is from Macmillan. I honestly have no idea what this is. So let's find out. It's big and it feels like it's got multiple books in it. So we'll see. It's like not usually the kind of packaging I get from Tor. Oh, you know what it could be though? I wonder if it's the new Jacqueline Carey books because they were going to send me um, Tor was going to send me the new paperback editions, the new trade paperback editions of like Cushiel's Dart and stuff. Maybe it's that. Let's see. Let's see. I don't know. Yes! That is what it is! Oh, okay. Oh, this is exciting. Oh, they're so pretty. Woo! Oh my gosh. Whoa! Oh man, Tor, y'all are so good to me. <sighs> Pretty, I love these. Okay, so they just came out with new trade paperback editions of these. We have Kushil's Dart, which I am going to be reading for the first time very soon with Cassiel's Servant, which is the new, like, it's like book one told from a different perspective. So they sent me that, but they also sent me, I don't know what order these go in. Uh, okay, okay. Kushiel's Chosen and Kushiel's Avatar. How pretty are those? I love them. They were only in those mass market paperbacks for a long time, so now I have them in trade paperbacks. Yes! Thank you, Tor! Okay, there will be a vlog coming uh, July or August? We'll see, depending on when I can get it done, where I'll be reading this and Cassiel's Servant, so stay tuned! Hello! I have a package that came in the mail from Macmillan. It's pretty small. It feels like it's probably a novella. So let's see what it is. Oh, yay. Okay, cool. So this is the third in a series of novellas. This one just came out and I had read the first two. Tor.com sent me the first two and I really enjoyed them. But this is The Book of Gems by Fran Wiles. And I don't know what they're all companion novels. So it looks like this one 
is set farther in the future and I don't know we'll see what it's about but I'm very excited to read it so thank you so much to Tor. Hello I have a pre-order that arrived and uh, some surprise gifts which was very thoughtful. I do want to say as much as I really appreciate the thoughtfulness and generosity of people who are wanting to buy me things off of my wish list it's not something that you need to do, especially all the time. I think it's something that sometimes happens a little bit more around like my birthday or the holidays, which is nice. And even then, like nobody needs to do anything. It's completely optional. So I do appreciate the thought and the generosity. I just, uh... Editing Bethany here. I think what I'm trying to get across very unsuccessfully in this clip, and it's something that I think is worth talking about. And this is really not about the person who bought this, but just it made me realize I wanted to say this in general. As much as I do appreciate people wanting to occasionally buy something off my wish list, and you know, you can do that. I predominantly originally created it for my other creator friends, like we kind of share amongst ourselves. And so just personally, if what you're wanting to do is support the work that I'm doing or show appreciation for the work that I'm doing in a financial way, which again, isn't necessary by any means, like nobody should feel obligated to do that. But if that's what you're wanting to do, more often than not, I would prefer people do that through something like Patreon or channel memberships or, you know, even Ko-fi. I think people do things through there as well. And honestly, for me, part of that is just because then I feel like I'm able to give something in return and it feels a little bit more like an even exchange. Um, anyway, I just kind of wanted to throw that out there that like, if somebody occasionally wants to do this or for like an occasion, like a, you know, birthday or holidays or whatever wants, wants to do that, I'm fine with it. But as far as an ongoing basis, I'd probably prefer one of those other avenues if that's something you want to do. And again, this is not for people who don't want to do that. That's totally fine. I, I just wanted to throw that out there <laughs> for other people. So thank you. That said, I did have two packages that arrived in the mail from Christopher. So thank you, Christopher. I do appreciate it, but you really don't need to. <laughs> You really don't need to keep buying me books, um, but thank you. So let's see what these are. All right, let's see. Yay! Awesome! Imago by Octavia Butler. I am really happy to have this. I've been slowly trying to build my collection and I love these new covers that they're doing. I just love Octavia Butler's work. It, her books are always hits for me. So thank you. Yay. Oh, that's very exciting. So I will add that to my Octavia Butler shelf. And then this one feels large. So let's see. Oh, this is like a hardcover. Okay. Oh, fun. Cool. Thank you. I really need to keep going with this series. So this is book four in the Mirror Visitor series, The Storm of Echoes. I now have all four of them. I have only read the first one. <laughs> I clearly need to read them. I have them on audiobook too because Libra FM had a deal where it was like a few dollars for a bind up of all four audiobooks, which I was like, great, awesome. Um, now I need to actually read the series. So that was very nice. Thank you so much. Then I do have a pre-order from Barnes and Noble and I think I know what this is. It's like my one, like my, my one thriller author that I regularly buy books from, if I'm right. Yes. <clears throat> Ruth Ware. It is Ruth Ware's latest, Zero Days. Barnes & Noble exclusive that has some extra content. It's like, this is, honestly, I like this cover a lot better in person because it's shiny and it looks a lot cooler in person than it does like in a picture. So I don't hate it. The ones and zeros make me wonder what all it's about. But yeah, I just really enjoy Ruth Ware's writing consistently. This was shorter than some of her other books, so I'm excited to check it out. Hello! I've got two packages from publishers to open, and I think this also might be the last clip in the video for this month. I've got a few days left in June, but I'm trying to get everything filmed ahead of time because we're going on vacation. So I will update you on where my numbers are at at this point. Although I think they will improve a little bit by the end of the month. It'll give you some idea of how things have gone. So let's open these first. The white package is from Macmillan. I, I, I don't know what they're sending me. Let's see. Oh, 
yay! That's exciting. Be sure by Shannon McGuire. This is the first bind up that they're publishing of some of the Wayward Children books. This has books one through three in it. And look how cool, I love it. And all the doors, oh, this is amazing. I absolutely love this series of novellas. They're so good. And I love that they're doing bind up. So this has Every Heart a Doorway, Down Among the Sticks and Bones, and Beneath the Sugar Sky. If you haven't tried this series, I really do recommend them. And this is pretty cool. You can get three for $19.99 because this is the first time there's been any of these in paperback. They've only been in the hardcover novellas the whole time they've been out. So that's awesome. I kind of want to do a reread of the series at some point. If people would be interested in a read along, maybe one of these days we'll do one. It would be fun. Um, but these have portal fantasy elements and each one follows different children. How do you even explain the series? The first book is kind of a murder mystery plot to it set at the school for wayward children for children who have slipped into other worlds and then come back and don't necessarily fit in as well. I love these. I enjoy them every year when we get a new installment and this is so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much to Tor.com. This is from Penguin Random House. I don't know what this is. Let's see. Maybe I'm forgetting something but... Oh, this looks cool. I don't think I knew I was getting this. Stars Hide Your Fires by Jessica Mary Best. It has like a sci fantasy vibe to it. Is that what it is? Oh, Knives Out goes sci-fi in this gripping YA mystery set in space. Perfect for fans of The Darkness Outside Us and Iron Widow. Okay, okay. That sounds awesome. I like the cover. It looks really cool. Is it sapphic? Like this looks queer. It's giving me that vibe. I don't know. This is so exciting. Locked room YA mystery set on a royal space station combining the wit, humor, and shocking twists of Knives Out with the hallmarks of a space opera. Cass is a quick-witted pickpocket, grifting her way to the ball with the intention of some heavy thieving, only to find herself as the leading suspect in the Emperor's murder. With help from her new partner in crime, Amaris, and her team of rogue rebels, Cass is on a mission to clear her name and rescue herself and her family. Well, that sounds absolutely delightful. They're com comping it to Iron Widow and Gideon the Ninth, so I'm guessing it's probably sapphic, but um, yeah, that's exciting. Thank you. This is from Quirk Books. Ooh, and look at that. I love it. The knives under the cover. Very cool. Awesome. That looks great. Okay, so those are all of the books. Let's take a look at where my stats are ending. <laughs> no. Not Goodreads servers over capacity, so I can't check my numbers. <laughs> Dang it. Come on. Ugh. Okay. Well, unfortunately, I apparently can't get onto Goodreads right now. So that's great. So I am just going to have to film the final clip another time. <laughs> I will be back to talk about my final owned TBR stats for the month. All right. Goodreads is intermittently working this morning. So let's talk about where my stats are in terms of TBR. As of today, again, I do have a few days left in the month, so I'm hoping to get these numbers a little bit lower before my final, you know, tally is up for the month. But in general, I'm going to say I have more books on my TBR now than I did at the beginning of the month. <laughs> so, not dramatically more though, like it, it could be worse. So at the beginning of May, I had 183 audiobooks on my TBR, which was up six from the beginning of the year. Currently, I have 185 books on my audio TBR, which is up eight from the beginning of the year. So two more audiobooks than I had. Honestly, the majority of this is coming from Libra FM influencer copies. They need to just stop having so many available. I am picky about which ones I take, but still, that seems to be increasing my audiobook numbers, and I need to maybe think about that. Ebooks are up one from the beginning of the month. I was at 67, which was the same as the beginning of the year. Now I'm at 68. Whatever, it's fine. And
and physical books is also up by three from the beginning of the month still down from the beginning of the year though did i say at the beginning of may i think i've been saying at the beginning of may i meant the beginning of june excuse me at the beginning of june i had 461 books on my physical tbr which was down 27 for the year now i have 464 books on my physical tbr which is three more than what i had at the beginning of the month I have just been getting so many things in the mail because the thing is I'm not buying that many books. Most of it is stuff that's being sent to me that's getting added onto my physical TBR. Um, so I do have a project in mind that I'm going to start working on to hopefully start to get some of those books off of my shelves if they're not things that I'm that interested in reading. So stay tuned for that. That's where we're at. You know, it could be worse, but it's not great either. Anyway, talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts on anything I talked about in this video. And for a question of the day, I guess let me know if you would be interested because I'm I'm tentatively planning on making a whole series of these videos, but would you be interested in seeing me do kind of a shelf declutter, try a chapter or several chapters type thing? That's what I'm planning. I mean, I'm gonna do at least one of them, but I'm just kind of wanting to gauge interest. I know Mara from Books Like Whoa has done a couple of videos sort of like what I'm planning to do. Um, and anyway, let me know if you're interested. If you guys like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.